We are back once again for another edition of Let's Play The Invasion. I know I call it Let's Play WWE 2001, but everybody knows when you're talking about 2001, especially in the WWF, you are talking about one thing and one thing only, and that is The Invasion. And with that being the case, there's only one way to kickstart Actually, we're not kicking start. Yeah. If I could actually talk, we are not kickstarting anything. The way I'm booking the invasion is the way I've been booking the invasion for the last three weeks, and that is slow and steady. Because I'm not rushing into it. I'm not doing what WWE did, and by the end of May, having. Um, and by the end of May, having the invasion kickstart and go forward because the WWE when they started it they started it March 26th 2001 when Shane McMahon showed up on Nitro to announce he was the owner of the w WCW and then it continued at Wrestlemania with people like Sean Stasiak, Billy Kidman, etc showing up but then after that it didn't continue until I believe the end of May when Lance Storm showed up on Monday Night Raw in Canada and super kicked I want to say Perry Saturn why have a month layoff for one of the big the biggest storyline in the history of WWF so I'm doing it a little different We're now heading full bore to Judgment Day, and the build starts tonight. As Raw sort of kick-started the build towards Judgment Day, and now everything else is being filled in tonight on SmackDown. So let's get to this episode of the Thursday Night Spectacle. To kick off the show, I had Hugh Morris win his first match since com since gaining his contract by beating Sean Stasiak a few weeks ago on Raw as he defeats local talent Chris Devine in a uh, pretty decisive fashion. But, uh, I mean, you know, disappointing opening match, but pretty solid in my opinion. And now we move to the Acolytes going up against the X Factor. As the Acolytes get the victory. As the Acolytes get the victory over Just Incredible and Albert. And officially call out Edge and Christian voicing how much, how they want a tag team title opportunity against Edge and Christian at Judgment Day. Uh, well, they don't say Judgment Day. They just hit. They just say they want a tag team title opportunity against Edge and Christian. And Edge and Christian play. Oh, what have you guys done to earn it? You don't deserve to face us. Because we are the greatest tag team in the WWF. You guys aren't on our level. Nice try, though. This pisses off Bradshaw and Farouk and kickstarts the feud where it's pretty clear Edge and Christian don't respect the Acolytes. And now we move to the women's match of the night as China faces off with Trish Stratus. And the reason for this match is very meaningless other than the fact that it kickstarts the feud between China and Lita, which is what William Regal insinuated on Raw during the uh, office segment with the Hardys and William Regal. 
because what other title could Lita have gone for other than the women's title? So that means Lita is China's next challenger, and Kevin Kelly asked China, what does she think about having Lita as her next challenger? And she says, it doesn't matter to me who I face. I'm the most dominant female in the WWF, and every time I step into the ring, I prove it. Lita's no different. Now we move, keep going forward as Billy Gunn faces another enhancement talent and another local enhancement talent in Adam Winsdor. And Billy Gunn gets the victory. Speaking of the commissioner's office, this is not in the commissioner's office, but it is in William Regal and the Undertaker. I mean, William Regal and the Undertaker. Kane in the Undertaker's locker room with William Regal walking in and informing Kane that he will be facing the big show this Monday night on Raw in a rematch for the WWF Hardcore Championship. And The Undertaker will also see action on Monday as well. But f to find out who his challenger will be, he'll have to wait till Monday. Uh, to be fair, both of them seem happy. Now we move forward as we go out to ringside following a commercial break with Kurt Angle coming down to r coming down to the ring and complaining about the fact that Chris Benoit is now going for the WWF title against Steve Austin. And before long, Chris Jericho makes his way out to the ring. A and from there, I'd give Chris and Kurt the segment because I know they could do masterful work like I let them do, because if you can see right at the bottom here, Chris Jericho went off script, meaning I did not give him or Kurt a script for a good reason, because I think that they could do good, without, or better without the script than they did with the script. All I would tell Chris to say is put over the fact saying, Kurt, do you do anything other than complain? All we do is hear you bitch and whine and cry and bitch and whine and cry every week. Well, I speak for these people when I say, will you please shut the hell up? Yes, I just wanted to get over, I just wanted to say Chris's old quote or catchphrase, and that's how I'd work it in. And yes, this is a start of a, this is the start of a feud between Kurt Angle and Chris Jericho. Don't mind me, um, but yeah. So I just wanted to work in Jericho's catchphrase into the segment. But either way, Chris and Kurt are feuding. And now, it's test against Matt Hardy. Why? Simple. This gives me a re this plays into what happened on Monday with both the Hardys wanting a title shot, and this will make the decision easier for 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 the for Commissioner Regal. So that's why I did it. And if you remember who won on Roa, God bless you. Oh, Matt Hardy debuted a new power spot that showcased his ability to sell well. His psychology will be helped by being able to use this go as a go-to spot in the future. Good job, Matt. Good job. Um, and then we move forward with Matt getting interviewed by Kevin Kelly about the loss and also about what him and Jeff have been talking about as far as the type of title shot they may want from William Regal if William Regal accepts their offer for a singles title shot. And all I have Matt say is, first of all, it's one loss. I can get back 
momentum and get back on track. Second of all, me and Jeff wanting singles title shots does not mean that the Hardy Boys are over with. It just means that maybe maybe the right word is we're going on a break. And we just want to, you know, not break up, but just see what we can find at this point in our careers as singles wrestlers. So yes, if William Regal does accept our offer, we'd be happy with going against any champion. But we feel like we can get or deserve an opportunity to challenge for a title. No matter which one it is. So Regal, if you're listening, hopefully you can uh, accept our offer. Now, I just want to acknowledge this. This is what this segment is about. We show the video package from Raw with these four people showing up and Michael Cole and Taz discuss JR and Paul's take on WCW showing up. They do not talk about... Uh, do, they do not show up again. They don't show up again. It's just Michael Cole and Taz talking about what happened on Raw. This is the first time in the two... Well, first time since Hugh Morris and Sean Stasiak showed up that, that the announcers, other than Michael Cole and Taz, are... Sorry... Paul Heyman and Jim Ross are acknowledging WCW. This is meaning this is the first time the WCW is being acknowledged on SmackDown. When will it be acknowledged by somebody on the roster? You'll have to wait and find out. Oh jeez. Is it because of the announcing that things are that things are going bad? The segment was penalized for Michael Cole's announcing work, low experience, poor announcing, poor color commentary. God. I mean, in, in an exceptional match, but enough went wrong in the match to make the match suck. And you could say, oh, the match didn't suck. You're, you're right, I agree. The match didn't suck. A 77 is still pretty good. But for a match between two guys in the mid-80s, and their in-ring performance is a 92, 89, a 92 and an 89 respectively, it should have gotten better. And also, this means we lost popularity. Yeah, we lost popularity in 32 regions because the show got a 68 final rating. A 60 fucking 8. I mean, yes, fine. SmackDown sucked. You're right. The show sucked. But I have no interest in stopping this series before at least WrestleMania of next year. I have no interest in stopping the series before then. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep the series going. Even if I drop from an international company, because I do believe WWE is an international company, which would explain why it's so tough, because it's very tough to keep your company at international status in any game, from EWR to TEW 2013 to this game, this game especially. But that would explain why it's why this database is being so annoying, because if everything doesn't go right for an international company, nothing's going to go right. But as Vince Russo would say, Rome wasn't built in a day. And it's going to take more than a month for my direction to get over with the company and for things to get back on track. So even though we're losing popularity left and right, you know, even though we're losing popularity left and right, it's okay. Because I can and I have turned things around in previous, in other seasons, and in previous Let's Play series. But it's going to take longer than a month to do it. So, I'm not, I'm not going to give up early and cut this short 
because that would be doing a disservice to this concept and this booking uh, booking segment. Meaning, I didn't book the invade. I didn't go and say I was going to book the invasion. I didn't take five, maybe two months, and write down pages upon pages upon pages of ideas for the invasion to kill the invasion within within six months, like WWE did. This is my way to book the invasion, even if it causes in-game WWE to drop from their current status. Because in my opinion, the way I've been booking. In real life, I don't think I would have lost popularity. I don't think I would have turned people off. I don't think I would have turned people off. In my opinion. Because in my opinion, I'm booking what I'd watch. And, I'm watch and I'd watch this. Yes, I'm one person, but I think that because of how... Because of expectations, because of my status, that's why the game's fucking me. With that being said, do you think that a 68 rating for this show was fair? If so, let me know down in the comment section below, and if not, let me know why you think that the 68 was fair. A fair final rating, and that things are going not very well thus far in the booking of the invasion. Let me know that, that down in the comment section, but... Because, as always, feedback is more than welcomed and appreciated. But if you don't want to leave a comment, you can always leave a like. And subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. That you can only find right here at Wrestling Express. Till next time. Later.